the need is out there and people are getting a little more comfortable saying, okay, I need to do something because I did nothing the last year and I've gained this amount of weight, which is a lot of people. And there's no shame in that. We all had to cope the way we needed to. So if you worked out some, great. If you didn't work out at all, guess what? Start now. It's fine. Welcome to the My Future Business Show, where we get you in front of your best audience and keep you there. Not only are we interviewing the biggest names in business to help you become even more successful, we're inviting you to book your spot on the show to help you grow your business. So at the end of the call, make sure you fill in the interview application form at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. Hi, and welcome back to the My Future Business Show. It's Rick Nusky. I'm your host. It's so wonderful to have you with us today. Now, I just take a second of pause to um, provide some feedback about your feedback. It's just wonderful. It's warm. Um, keep it coming. Absolutely love it. Now, I hope you're um, fit and healthy no matter where you are in this big, wide world of ours. And it's relevant that I mention that because on today's show, I'm with the wonderful Joni Faye from Fay Fitness. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. No, it's absolutely my pleasure. We were just uh, touching momentarily on the pandemic, and obviously we're going to take a deep dive uh, into that journey. But um, first of all, for everybody who was on the show with us, if you don't know much about Joni at the moment, by the end of the show you will. She is a personal trainer, and we're going to be talking about uh, talking about what it's like to start a business during the pandemic and how to pivot in the fitness industry. But before we do any of that journey, I'd love to uh, learn a bit more about you. And I often start off by asking, where are you located? Sure. I am located in uh, Virginia, in Herndon. Uh, it's within Fairfax County, Virginia. It's one of the, the largest counties in the state and the country, actually. What do you have as a landmark? What, what might people know? Um, just about half an hour, 45 minutes from D.C., so, oh, yes, of course. Pretty pretty close to the capital. Fantastic. Well, it doesn't get much closer to the centre of the earth there, does it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, um, um, I'd love to learn a little bit more about you personally in terms of um, your hobbies and your sports. I know you're right into fitness, but do you have any other hobbies outside of the fitness industry? Um, I'd say, you know, uh, love for animals. Uh, my husband and I uh, recently adopted our second uh, rescue dog. So we have two rescue dogs Beautiful. now, um, one we got a couple of years ago and then one just about a month ago. <laughs> are, they, are they like, uh, what types of dogs? Are there any one in particular, given that they're um, rescues? Yeah, it's what typically with the rescues, it's really, they kind of guesstimate what the breed is, um, but <laughs> there's no way to know for sure unless you do one of those little fun doggy DNA uh, yes. swab tests. Yes. Um, but so one of them is, is uh, the first one we got is like more of a terrier chihuahua mix. And then the second one we got is more of like a terrier chihuahua dachshund mix because she's like tiny and long <laughs> it's, just, it's quite comical <laughs> oh, as long as they're loving and have got a beautiful temperament do you take them for walks yeah oh yeah it's it's a ritual with us um at least two a day um two long walks sometimes three um because we have a great neighborhood full of other you know uh animal lovers so you see dogs and cats all over the place um so yeah it's it's kind of critical to keep their temperament you know good with dogs to get them on those walks yeah, so um, when you were growing up, do you remember anything about your childhood? I often like to ask. Do you, do you have one fond memory as a child growing up? Um, wow, yeah. Um, I, have, I have a few, but um, I'd say one of my most fond ones actually goes back to when I was, I was only three and I was real little and I got my first dog. And I think that's kind of what sparked the interest. Yep. Um, and it just, parents put it like in a box for all of a second, you know, with, with holes at of course <laughs> and they said open it up and the dog just kind of popped out on its hind legs and it, it it was a little black and brown terrier but to me being so little it looked like a bear so I called <laughs> it a bear and then that just kind of stuck <laughs> yeah that's fantastic now this is all a matter of context I'd love to learn a bit about the people who are on the show because there's, there's there's business and then there's people I'd love to get a balance between the both of those two things so thank you so very much now um, as a child did, were you a reader did you enjoy stories and things like that yeah, um, it was pretty well, um, you know, pushed on the, on the uh, elementary school side, like book challenges and stuff, which kind of, if you didn't enjoy it at first, it kind of pushed in that direction to enjoy it more. So I loved reading all kinds of fun, you know, kid books and teenage drama kind of things, um, and then kind of just pushed me into 
similar like movies yep, and, yep. and shows that I would like. Well, that's interesting. So I, I'm a big fan of movies, not so much Netflix. I like to actually go to the cinemas, but given the constraints at the moment that we're all going through, um, do you enjoy movies? Uh, what types of movies do you enjoy at the moment? Um, at the moment, I would say I really push myself to watch more um, comedies or rom-coms, the, you know, chick flick ones, just because they're lighthearted and they make you laugh. Um, I, I'm not at all for like the drama or the heavy, like the deep stuff, violent ones. Cause yeah, that there's too much like negative stuff on the news right now. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You don't need to look too like far. That. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love the, I love the fact that you're focusing on, on the lighthearted stuff, because like you say, there's just, you just don't have to look too far to see the negative in the world. And I think what you're doing with your business is absolutely fantastic. We're going to pivot to that in the moment. Um, I wonder, do you, are you, do you like the Olympics and what do you think about uh, the upcoming summer Olympics? Do you think it's going to go ahead? Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it's going to move forward. The you know, they're getting really strict. I heard on the spectator part, and no one um, from outside can, you know, no travelers can come into the country um, and and watch it. And I totally get that. I mean, I'm shocked that they, you know sense. they're allowing spectators at all, but yeah, they're keeping absolutely. it really tight. And I think that's smart because these athletes, you know, just work so hard. So it's nice that they'll get a chance to to compete. Now, um, do you follow any particular athletes? Do you get your inspiration from anyone in particular? Who do you who do you follow? Who who's standing out for you at the moment? Um, they don't need to be. There's that, so many. Yeah, they don't need yeah. to be an Olympian. Just in general. Yeah, because you know it's it's cool to watch the Olympics, but I don't. There's no one that um, yeah. in that arena that I can pick offhand. Um, but I'd say like who my inspiration actually comes from. Um, purchasing one of the peloton bikes and the instructors that are behind that they're kind of just powerhouse olympian you know level in some ways um in what they do and and how they inspire people so that's kind of where i drew from early on yeah because you have a, a long history with um indoor cycling classes don't you tell us a little bit about that yeah i do that was kind of the start of, of all of it um i was running to as part of my cardio, what my workouts at the time years ago were a mix of running and then working with kettlebells for the strength side. And when mm-hmm. we were in a, a tiny condo and, you know, limited on space and went down to the gym and, and did that. And it got to the point where I'd never really, I liked the kettlebells. I like the strength side a lot, but the cardio, I was struggling to find what I liked and I hated running. I did it <laughs> just to check the box, honestly. <laughs> and I make the best playlist in the world. And it still was just a suffer through all of it. <laughs> and then it started to kind of just take its toll on my knees and my joints more. And I just said, you know, I don't know that I'm built for this. I really want to find something low impact and discovered the spin bike. And at the time I was pretty, you know, always been pretty introverted. And so I went with the at home Peloton bike route. So, I, you know, if I'm embarrassed, I'm in the comfort of my own home. And um, I just immediately took to it it was just it just became like a healthy addiction and i loved it and i was just ride after ride building up 100 rides 200 rides and then finally i had friends and family say hey you know why don't why don't you think of teaching this like just a side hustle yeah. fun you know at a gym or one of those boutique studios you have a you know teaching background you love the fitness side of life like why don't you try it out and i just kept pushing it away and then i <laughs> remember vividly hitting 500 rides. And I was like, I never thought I'd hit 50 rides or hundred. Then now I'm hitting 500. You know, I'm just going to take the plunge, sign you up for it. the certification. And if I'm horrible at it and whatever. So I, I did it and then I got certified and then you have to, you know, audition to get a spot somewhere, whether it's at a gym or a boutique studio, which is terrifying. <laughs> um, but I, I did it. I auditioned, I got hired and then, you know, fast forward and I ended up going from being a sub and just, picking up classes that need to get covered and then got my own regular weekly class. And it just, the love for that, it it just just became amazing. And the people, you know, are just so great. You see the same faces every week and then new ones here and there, it just becomes a community. And that's when I said, Oh, I gotta, I got, this needs to be a full-time gig, but you know, how am I going to make my mark in the fitness industry? And then that's when I went to get certified as a personal trainer. Cause I, at the time was in a completely different, career field for years and I just could have kept doing that and going through the motions and being good at it but not being happy and I was like this is my world I love this I have to I need to do this full time and so that just I just decided to pivot later in life you know in my 30s but I said screw it I'm not I don't want to do this job that I'm doing for another 20 30 years oh yeah you know I'm just I'm just going to be going through the motions and not really enjoying life at all 
See, I take a couple of things away from this is that if you step up to the plate and you give it a go, you never know how much you can actually achieve. So that's inspirational. Um, you, you're motivated and, you know, you, you, you just try things because life is a one-shot deal, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And another thing that I love is that uh, we have uh, part of the Tour de France come through um, McLaren Vale in, in South Australia occasionally, at least when they were doing that, and I went and watched them. And it takes a certain breed of individual to do what they do. What does it take for for you to um, uh, get, get up in the morning, stay motivated, and what does a typical day look like for you at the moment, Journey? Um, you know, typical day is... I get up pretty early and I try to get my workout in first thing because in the rest of the day can just be a mix of, you know, different schedules each day, depending on which clients I have. Um, and you know, then it's a matter of taking care of the dogs and then my day of work starts going. And if I don't have a client right away, then I work on programming and other business plans. Um, and then, then I, you know, once I, gear up and start getting clients here are my virtual sessions I do for some clients I have at a distance. Yep. Um, then it's just, you know, kind of nonstop until, you know, bedtime, a few breaks here and there, yep, you know, yep. but, um, that's, generally that's, it. that's pretty much my day. So I make sure to get my stuff that I need to take care of for my health and fitness done early. And the motivation really comes from my clients and, you know, my friends and having my spin class that I was doing, um, because it's like, you know, I know these people are hustling and they're working hard. So I got to show up even on the days where it's, it's a struggle. <laughs> yeah. And we do have those where as long as you're a human, you have two feet and heartbeat, you're susceptible to those days where you just want to pull the covers over your head, aren't you? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> now, in terms of um, uh, your your business, how did that come about? I know you've talked about it a little bit. I was wondering if you could just expand on that conversation and, and tell us a bit about, you know, when you decided to put some, you know, a physical location in place and, you know, what was that whole process like for you? Sure. Um, you know, it was accelerated, unfortunately, by the pandemic. Um, I was working as a trainer in a big box gym and several clients and, you know, was gaining just so much experience there and, and was just happy to be there and could have been there for years. Yeah. Um, but when the pandemic happened, it would just, everything came to a halt. And then when the gyms closed, you know, I retained um, some of those clients virtually, but most of them just, you know, said, I can't, I can't do anything right. I need a break mentally. I'm just shot. And I get it. So like yeah. no judgment, everyone's got to handle it their own way. So mm -hmm. I went from a full roster to almost no roster. And then I started, I got some referrals from clients, from uh, friends I have, you know, chiropractors or just friends and family out there. And so I started to build up some clients of my own. Um, and as I'm toggling between the two sides and, you know, not knowing when the gyms are going to reopen and yeah, then even yeah. when they did, it's still, there's, there's still a fear of, of people, some people not being ready to train. So mm -hmm. um, I haven't had a chance really to go back there yet. So I said, you know, what am, what am I going to do? And I'm not, I'm not going to stop. Like, you know, a lot of people that I'm close to wanted to question, you know, are you, you going to go back to the industry that you were in before? Or are you like, yep. what's your plan? And I said, no, like I'm too Committed. headstrong with this and yep. I'm too in love with it. I'm, I'm not giving up. So I went to the county. I, you know, got my LLC paperwork filed and I said, this is going to be my thing. And I'm going to continue to push, you know, virtual training for people that, you know, are at a distance or can't just don't feel comfortable being in person mm -hmm. and um, aren't going to come here. And then for the people who want to come here, I said, all right, I'm going to attack this the safest way I can. And my husband and I had already built out um, the facility in our basement, which is the gym grade equipment, yep. gym grade flooring and mm -hmm. the whole deal. Um, and it's perfect for just one on one safe training um and i wear a mask and gloves all sessions my clients even wear masks that just means they may take longer breaks between you know sets but it's it's one of those things where i'm not kicking you out at 60 minutes we're not done at one hour on the dot we're done when the programming's done which is casted to the tv so yep. like you'll see when we're you know done so if it's 75 minutes i don't care like yeah yeah we're getting it done Absolutely. Um, because your safety comes first and then the plethora of cleaning supplies and spray 
gun sanitizer, yes. backpacks, <laughs> whatever it takes is what I'm doing. I spent a lot of time on the janitorial side. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So. Yeah, well, look, you've, you, you certainly got your, your best foot forward and it, it is a credit to you. Now, you're talking about uh, innovating, you're talking about pivoting. Um, obviously, uh, the fact is you're now on this show talking about this. This is another element to all of this. Now, what do you suggest for those who are in a similar position and they want to be more successful? Do you think that they should be marketing their businesses a little better or doing things differently? Um, yeah, it doesn't hurt to to put yourself out there the best way you can. And, you know, whether it is through, there's so many good social media outlets, you know, people using business places on Facebook or, you know, LinkedIn, Instagram, use some of it, use all of it, whatever works best for you, but try to reach your target audiences. Um, and even if it's, it's local, you know, um, apps like we have here called next door, where you can put up local ads in your neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Um, if you want to go the postcard paper route, it's not, it's not too old school. People do it. you still get postcards from realtors and all other industries in the mail all the oh, yeah. time. So whatever works, but you got to get yourself out there. Um, and it's, it's doable. You just, it's going to take the work. It's going to take the time. It doesn't happen overnight, but um, if you want it, you just got to go for it. And the, you know, the Since need is out there and people are starting to get more active and I'm getting more contacts now, especially now that the vaccines are being pushed more, yeah. that people are getting a little more comfortable saying, okay, well, I, I need, I need to do something because I did nothing the last year and I've gained, this amount of weight, which is a lot of people. Oh, yeah. And there's no shame in that. No, absolutely You know, not. we all had to cope the way we needed to. So yep. if you worked out some, great. If you didn't work out at all, guess what? Start now. It's yeah. fine. There was uh, obviously the fear factor. Then there, then there was the comfort eating, all of those types of things. Now, uh, in terms of the uh, internet and the online or the virtual training space, that's a big blue ocean of opportunity. Um, what does that look like in terms of the practical uh, steps for a client that works with you? Sure. Um, I, you know, I think a lot of people are scared when they hear virtual because they feel like they're missing out on the experience. But I can tell you that my virtual clients don't get any less of a workout than my in-person clients. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, it's tailored to their specific goals, their limitations if they have an injury or prior injury, any pain, whatever. Um, but then also whatever equipment they have. I have clients that have the full set of dumbbells from, you know, two pounds to 70 pounds or whatever fancy racks are out there and they've got, you know, ropes and all kinds of stuff in their garage. And then I have clients that literally have one set of adjustable dumbbells. that goes up to like 20 pounds mm -hmm. and a set of those little mini latex resistance fans. That's and right. that client with just those pieces still gets a full body workout because a good trainer can use those pieces. They can also use just straight body weight. I mean, that's what we're geared to do. That's what we're knowledgeable in. So you're not going to get any less of a workout um, just because you don't have all the equipment. And especially, you know, in the past several months, it was hard to get any equipment online. Or if you did, it was $500 oh, for yeah. two sets of dumbbells. It was ridiculous. I noticed that. So, the prices went through the roof. Yeah. yeah. It, the demand is insane, you know, and like trying to get a spin bike would take you four months to get one if you could. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, I, I told people not to be discouraged. Like it, it's doable. And I'm literally watching every movement you're doing the same way I would if you I were was gonna a person. Ask about so that. I'm keeping... Yeah, I'm keeping you safe, which is the primary one of the primary reasons people, you know, want trainers is not just the accountability, but it's to keep them safe because so many people have improper technique and form, and then the injury is just yeah, it's waiting at that point. A couple of things I've taken from that journey is that uh, it's not about having not enough resources; it's about being resourceful, isn't it? Um, now, I'd love to, I guess, move into the conversation of, um, I guess, hydration and diet. What's what's your part to play in that component? Sure. You know, as a certified personal trainer, we have a, a good, you know, general overview knowledge of, you know, mm -hmm. what's important with nutrition and we work our best to guide clients um, in the right way. And the simple stuff, you know, if having enough water every day, trying to kick the soda and, and realizing how much hydration is important um, and guiding them on how much water they need. And then just the simple stuff with food and meal planning and, you know, ideas to keep you on track and help you with those, you know, macros to make sure that you're getting enough protein. Cause if you're strength training and you're not getting enough protein to rebuild that muscle and repair the muscle, then all that work you're doing is, is going to waste because yeah, you need yeah. that protein. Um, so, and, you know, making sure that there is that balance where yes, you need carbs. I'm not going to tell you to do some crazy, no carb diet. Mm -hmm. Um, that's it's, it's not healthy. It's not sustainable. So it's all within, I say, 
moderation, not deprivation. So it's guiding them um, as best you know I can. So yeah. I talk through that. And then you'll have a few clients here and there that are just really, that is not enough. And they are struggling and they need someone to hold their hand for everything they put in their mouth. And there's nothing wrong with that. At that point, I would, you know, suggest a nutrition certified coach friend that I have. Uh, there's several out there, but um, I've got a close friend that that's, that's what she does. So at yep. that point, I'm not going to overstep. I'm going to say, I think you need to speak with her. You no know different than she's not going to start. Yeah, I know my boundaries. She knows her. She doesn't yep. start programming in-depth workouts for people because that's not her <laughs> area of expertise. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. So. It's, it's wonderful. I'm absolutely loving this call because this is a, a space that I'm interested in personally. I, I, I often think about um, the role that um, fast food outlets and manufacturers have to do with marketing and what responsibility and shift in psyche, so, um, social psyche do you see um, happening as a result of the pandemic? Are we still eating lots of fast food? Are you seeing a shift? What's happening in your perspective? Um, yeah, I think, you know, people are still, you know, there were, I think a lot of people were, it was getting consumed a lot before, but I think it, food became an emotional thing throughout mm -hmm. this, which is, it's a normal reaction and it's, it's getting hard to reel that in. So people, it's going to take time when people bounce back or whether it's because they got their vaccine or when they go back to work in an office setting again, whatever it is, but to try and reel that in is going to be hard and it's doable, but um, the convenience just makes it easy. And I mean, there's even, I've read an article recently that they're showing the numbers of people who've gone through drive throughs just from a safety precaution. It's gone up by leaps and bounds and they yeah. don't think that that dynamic is going to change in the future. There's like, Hey, it's gotten easy. I don't get out of my car. I feel safer. I don't have to touch anything. Contactless. So yes. Yeah. So it's trying to break that habit. Um, and yeah. I, you know, I'm all for supporting small business. I know people got a lot of deliveries from your local, you know, restaurant that, you know, isn't a big chain or whatever. And, and that's great. It's just, again, it's a moderation, you know, my yeah. husband and I will get the occasional takeout. I'm not depriving myself, but it's, you know, it might be once a month, yeah, not yeah, once yeah. a week. Yeah. Yeah. Now that's wonderful insight. I, I wonder about mindset. Does, um, does what you do um, have a positive impact on the mindset of those that you work with? Or is, are you attracting a certain type of person who already has a good mindset or what's that look like? Um, you know, I definitely try to help shift the mindset because a, a lot of the clients that I work with, um, my uh, main client base are people like myself, like right before or around the middle age range. Yep. Um, that are trying to either restart their fitness plan. Maybe they were athletes in high school or college or just never really been into it. Don't even know what to do. Don't know where to start, but are struggling to lose that extra weight because they gained it from stress or from a divorce or, you know, whatever every life happens. So they need that kickstart. They need that person to help them. I've been there. You know, I've got my before and after pictures. Mine just happened earlier in life. It happened in my twenties when stuff wasn't great. So yeah, yeah. I get it. I know how hard it is to try and how to shift that mindset to, enjoy your workout and once you find stuff that you enjoy it makes it so much easier to stick to it like like i said when i found the spin bike i i love it i still i'm you know nearing a thousand rides like it it's it's my jam and yep. i'm gonna want to i want to teach spin as long as i can you know so that's never something i'm gonna give up and when i there's a lady a client i have that comes here twice a week and I see her get excited about some of the this, this stuff we do that she would have never thought to do as an exercise outside her wheelhouse, you know, whether it's like a, you know, a sled that you kind of pull with yep. weight plates on it or the battle ropes you see um, on TV sometimes. She, she loves it. You know, it's the little things that make a difference. So it's much better than she's trying to go to a gym and like just lift dumbbells and doesn't know what to do. And yes. that's where people get lost. A rudderless boat, as it were. Yeah. <laughs> so how does it make you feel when you see that transformation? Because that's what you're all about. You're about transformations. Tell us about an experience uh, uh, with one of your clients without obviously naming names or anything. Sure. Um, it just it makes me so happy because that's the whole reason I do this. Um, you know, I, I monthly, there's monthly weigh-ins. We put people, you know, on a scale and, yep. you know, measures all of their details, body fat percentage, and all that stuff, because your total weight means nothing. What I want to know is how much muscle you built and how much body fat percentage you lost. So that overall number is worthless until we know the nitty gritty details. And when you see the face on people, you know, I had a client and she, not only did she lose 20 pounds, but she see that big difference in the shift was huge. But I mean, it wasn't just 20 pounds to her. It was when the number went under 200. Oh, yeah. When it went to 190 something, you know, and she was over 200, like just she almost looked like she was going to cry. She was on the scale. So that 
that just, you know, is, is a priceless moment. And then to see how much muscle that they've gained and, and how, how well they're tracking, you know, it's, it's right there. It's tracked every month. They get to see it on a grid, you know, over eight months at a time. Um, they see the history yeah. and it's just, it's cool to have that technology, but it's cool to let them see like your hard work, it pays off. Like even when you're stressed and you want to give up, look at this you know, you're, you're doing it. So. Yeah. Fantastic. You're changing lives and that, that in itself must motivate you incredibly. Do you, do you have uh, clients um, having conversations with you? Look, uh, Joni, I'm really not feeling it today or this and that. Do you ever have a conversation that, you know, re-sparks and energizes them to, you know, get back involved and get involved? Yeah. I try to highlight the positive, um, you know, aspects of all their progress thus far and, you know, how, we all have those days where we struggle and there's some days where they're, it's really hard. And that may be the day you need to take a rest day because I'm a huge advocate that you need at least one or two rest days a week, your body and you know, your muscles, they have to recover for you to perform at your best and continue to build upon that. Um, so if that you have to shift gears and maybe Tuesday's your rest day instead of Wednesday, fine, we'll so figure it out. I'll, we'll try to reschedule because sometimes mentally it's just, it's not going to happen. Mm-hmm. I get it. <laughs> but if you're on that, if you're teetering and I can get you, in, I'm going I'm to pull as hard as I can because I've been there and I know. Yep. So. Yeah, absolutely. Incredible. Cool. Thank you very much for sharing. Now, um, I've looked at some of the, the elements of your website. I've seen some of the transformation, the, the testimonials, and it's, it's a real credit to you, the work that you're doing. Tell us about the three M's. <clears throat> What's that about? Sure. Um, you know, motivation is a big one. So, I'm, you know, kind of like your cheerleader, I'm not, you know, too much in your face annoying. I get it. People are like, hey, back <laughs> off. But I try to just stay positive and, you know, coach you through it and yeah. just keep you motivated um, and get you to the point where it shifts to a drive. You know, motivation is only going to get you so far that I want you, I want to build that drive. So you got that passion to keep going. So that's a big one. Um, movement, it's essential, even if it's a little bit every day when you're not with me, like if some walks around the block, a, you know, nice jog or a run here and they're like, just to stay moving, it changes so much. Like you can just be sitting on a couch, depressed, seeing stuff on TV, not knowing what day is going to come next. Sedentary. But I can promise you, yeah, if you get off that couch, and even if it's as simple as just 20 minutes walking around your neighborhood, the combination of the fresh air, the sunlight, you know, just that movement can change everything. Um, and Turn then off that the television music. and go for a walk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just get up and move. I promise you, you'll feel better. Yep. Um, and then the the last one of the three M's is the music, uh, which will forever be, you know, intertwined with my spin class background is that's my favorite part of, of teaching those classes is that I get to create a custom playlist and we ride to the rhythm. So when you connect to fun music that you can relate to, whether it's from today's current music, I go all the way back to like the fifties, you know, people love, love it. it. Um, that makes a difference. And so I take that same kind of mindset into my training. And when people start up with me, I say, you know, give me five or so, whether favorite bands, genres, whatever music that you like, and that's all I need. And you, you know, you can give me new ones a, a month from now, whatever it's fluid, it changes, but just give me something to start with. And I will build a custom playlist that's playing in the background the whole time. And that helps keep you motivated, you know? So it's better than just some weird, like, you know, elevator music you hear at some places or just nothing in the <laughs> yeah, background. Yeah. So. Well, they say that uh, music is a window to the soul. You know, if you can, if you can open that door and, and, you know, get people to spark up and, and lift their shoulders and, and get their body moving because, you know, movement of the body is so important and it's sedentary lifestyle that's a, a killer nowadays, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. I know from coming from a office job, traditional job before <laughs> I shifted gears, you know, how it was just like, uh, it's just wearing sitting at that, at that desk all day. So in terms of, um, I guess, um, acceptance into your programs, you'd, you'd obviously looking for information before working with people, especially in the virtual space. What does that process look like? How do you, how do you assess somebody for suitability? Sure. Um, you know, first I kind of want to know, a few reasons like what's their why like why why are they looking to do this you know because typically they're coming to me it's not the other way around yeah. so i want to know what motivated you to connect with me um have you you know worked out on your own before or with the trainer in the past how to go what what motivates you where do you struggle um but more than anything are you like ready willing and able to do this because 
sometimes you, you need to be sure because sometimes you have like a spouse that's pushing someone or a friend and they're just not really ready to do it yet. And you kind of need someone in that place because if not, then you're going to get people that really don't want to do it or tend to just cancel left and right and whatnot. And, and mm-hmm. I want to help you. So, yeah. but I need you to be ready to help yourself. So it's, it's a team effort here. I can't, I, I can't be there, you know, like a little birdie on your shoulder telling you not to eat that yeah. thing that you don't need to eat. You know, I'm going to guide you as best I can, but then it's, it's a relationship. So I need to just make sure that you're willing to be in it. You know, yeah, is the, is your online, is your, the virtual space is always active and online and, and happening. What about, um, I guess, uh, activating the actual physical gym environment? How's that going? Is that coming back online as it were? Um, yeah, it's, it's moving more now, um, as things have gotten a little better with the vaccine and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so I, I mean, I think that, and you know, the, I'm still connected with uh, big box gym as far as teaching spin and, you know, hopefully training at some point, I, you know, I'll still be a part of that too, but, um, it's, it's starting to slowly build. I'm seeing on the commercial side as well with, with the big box gyms. I, it, you know, it's not as rapid as we thought, you know, we all thought starting up is going to be a few weeks. Yeah, stop, start, be reopened, stop, but start, stop, stop. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Now look, uh, so, you go ahead. I was just going to say, you know, ultimately it's, it's going to take time, but I, you know, I think we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, absolutely. No, I'm, I've been looking over your website, like I've said now, um, most importantly, um, I bet you there's some people on the call today thinking, you know what, it is time for me and when they want to um, get involved with this and they want to do at least a virtual session with you, talk us through that process because I know that you have a discussion and where can people find you when they want to go through that process? Sure. Um, you know, my website's the easiest way, uh, jfayfitness.com. There's a contact page and it immediately gives you the ability. It's got my phone number, email, but then if you just hit the free consultation button, it gives you a live calendar comes up and you just book a slot and then it's, you know, going to send you an email reminder the day before and we connect, um, via FaceTime, Zoom, whichever, you know, app platform is, is best. And, um, we go through, you know, your goals and everything, and then just make sure you don't have any current physical limitations. If you do, you know, I can work around them, but I just need to know before we move forward. And then, um, after we have a third discussion on, on that, your plan, your goals and everything, then we just do a shortened version of a workout um, to give you an idea of what working with a personal trainer is like and why it's different and why we can maximize the results in a few hours a week versus people spending endless time doing stuff at a gym or now, you know, stuff on YouTube. Those things are are great, but some people, A, lack the motivation and B, that person on the other side of the screen who's a recording or even if it's a live class on Instagram, they can't see you. They can't see your form. So that may be great for the seasoned gym goer that's already knowledgeable on form and all that stuff. Yep. But yeah, for people that are kind of scared and new or trying to restart, that can be dangerous because those are built for a wide variety of fitness levels, not yours. I'm going to tailor this to what you can do at this moment and progress you accordingly. Yeah, fantastic. So. Thank you so much. Um, if this is um, not mo- motivating for you, I don't know what would be, but um, if you're ready, if you're um, ready to partner with somebody who has your best interest in mind, then certainly reach out to Joni at uh, jfayfitness.com. No matter where you see this interview, you will find the links back to Joni and reach out to her. Book yourself a, a complimentary uh, consult call and a, a complimentary training session with Joni. And with all that being said, Joni, thank you so very much for spending some time with me on the My Future Business Show today. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining us today. If you enjoyed the call, then make sure to subscribe, leave a comment, share us with your friends and book your spot on the show at myfuturebusiness.com forward slash interviews. And if you're looking for solutions that will help grow your business, then visit myfuturebusiness.com forward slash shop.